James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. It's that time again. I keep on I keep on knocking into poor Mr. Anonymous. I'm sorry, sir. It's that time again. Another week has blown by and we're back. We're back. Back on track. Hello, everyone. And welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I I'm your host, James P. Madonna of uh, Mega Life 21, and I uh, am here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeast New Jersey, and I would like to introduce my illustrious co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored, which is the foundation of our organization, in 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling this week, sir? Hey. How the hell are you? Hey. How the hell are you? I'm fine. You're fine? Yeah. Gotta make sure my buddy's nice and straight. Mr. Anonymous. Well, we don't know if he's straight or not. No, he's a. Well, well it'd be gay. He, do, he, he makes the right decision. He's not affiliated with any party, with any organization or group. He's he's all for making the right decision. I'm talking about gay. And, and sometimes versus straight. You got oh, oh okay. <laughs> sometimes you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet in life. That's one of my favorite sayings. All the time you have to break eggs to make an omelet. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, um, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And I like the other saying. You know, if it looks like a duck, sounds like a duck, walks <laughs> like a duck. You know what I mean? It's, hold on. It's, it's our, our wonderful, bug. our wonderful um, uh, alternative, provider alternative of energy heat. heating system. What? Provider of heat. What? Provider of heat. Provider of heat. In the winter time. Okay. Before I read the one Whopper, oh. I, don't, I don't mean the hamburger. I mean. My monologue, uh, and it's a doozy. I um, want to mention that um, Michelle Bachman, of course, was uh, in the spotlight recently, making another Assenheim very imbecilic statement, like she always does. But this one, I, I, myself, and the members of the. Uh, Uncensored, hard-hitting truth Facebook group. We were all scratching our heads over this one. Michelle Bachman, Turner Overdrive, said that Moses uh, provided provided and uh, the, the Ten Commandments. He brought down the Ten Commandments because the purpose of them was because God wanted the United States to become a rich country. Now, what the hell do the Ten Commandments have to do with capitalism and how much wealth a country has, let alone the United States? She must think God is like a uh, hundred uh, percent like uh, preoccupied with the United States of America. Well, in fact, he is actually not in a lovely way. I mean, a nice way. But well, not because we're under a curse now, but the United States of America and the UK. And the English-speaking uh, countries that came out of them yeah. were blessed from Abraham. In other words, all of the fruits, all of the the, That's correct. the offspring coming from the British Empire, all the English-speaking colonies, yeah. which we are one of Australia, them. Australia, New Zealand, et and us. Et mm -hmm. These are the, the lost ten tribes of Israel. Right. They are the modern day descendant. So they were blessed through Abraham. Originally. And Isaac. And Jacob. Right. You know, well, not God now. gave Abraham certain blessings. 
about it going to be the great nation. There's going to be one great nation. There's going to be one commonwealth of nations. Yeah. The United States and the UK. So yeah, they were blessed up until a certain time. Right now, the blessings have been taken away. And deservedly so. But the Ten Commandments, my friend, were in effect a long time before Moses brought them down from the mountain. It's a foundation to live by. Without, in other words, yes, we're under... They go back to Adam. We're under grace. Yes, okay. we're, 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 we're saved. Yeah, we're saved by the... Nobody is saved. The, well, I was... Except the elect. I was talking to Ken Create, and he was insisting... He may insist, that the, but the Bible... That... That's where we go. That if you you repent, you are saved automatically. You are, we all are saved because Christ took all the sins upon himself. That's correct. But it's not for everyone now. It's, I'm sorry to have to yeah. inform those kind of... Well, the, the, the evangelical born-again holy rollers, they're... They're, I think they're afraid of the tribulation, so they're they're using this as a reason to say, well, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna be we're not gonna suffer or get killed in the tribulation because we're saved and we're we're gonna get raptured up. So I think the fear that's what they believe. I think the fear that they have of this they don't really have the fear <clears throat> because they don't really understand what the tribulation is. I do not think they read Matthew 24 and Revelation to understand what is going to occur in the Great Tribulation no. and how many people are going to be dead. They're, they're too busy reading Paul, Paul's letters. Everything is Paul's letters, Paul's letters, Paul's letters. Well, if they read Paul's letters, they would be understanding what the Bible says instead of what they said. Okay? Paul's letters. Big deal. What does that mean? The point I'm making is they want the tribulation to come and then Jesus will come and save them. But it ain't going to be like that because the great tribulation is going to be the greatest destruction ever the world has ever seen. You hear that? Oh, uh, we'll see. You hear that Tea Party and Republicans? Yeah. That think that uh, they're going to escape it by building underground uh, condominiums deep in the, in the beneath the uh, missile silos, you know, deep in the ground. Ain't nobody going to escape it except the elect who will be saved, if you want to use that word, resurrected first. 140... The first resurrection. 144,000? That's correct. 144,000 from each tribe. Right. Now that okay. doesn't mean... That doesn't mean that regular people, everyday Joe Sixpacks, are never going to be saved, but it's just not their time. That's correct. It, it won't be their time. There's something called the Great White Throne of Judgment! The second re resurrection. Great okay. White Throne of Judgment. Yes. So, um, getting back to the wonderful Michelle Bachman Turner Overdrive and her comment. She, it sounds like she doesn't know a damn thing about the Bible. She does not. She Christianity. She believes that everything written in red was 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 written by Jesus. You see, there are certain Bibles. Right. Excuse me. Sir. That have everything that Jesus said, not wrote, said in red. Well, That's probably the kind of Bible she has. You notice that the right wing. Zealots. Watch my printer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you notice that the right-wing zealots are like Joel Osteen. They always bring up the word rich, wealthy. Everything to them is money, money, money. 
Which, because they believe if you got money, you're blessed by God. Yeah. Well, they they are they are guilty of idolatry because their god is money. They worship their their lovers of money. <coughs> the Republicans. <coughs> Well, we see that right now, don't we? Uh, are you going to bring up this issue, or shall I just leave that in? No, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up right now. Okay, well, we see that right now. No. With the new spending bill. It's not It's not pleasant. In We're the not, Senate, uh, from the House. Yeah. Uh, we're in. We're hey. in. We're in the money. Now, let me read this. And then you can say all you want. But it's not good news. There is very, because it's Republican. very rarely will it be good news because they will just sabotage everything that's good and important for the masses, for, for the people of this planet. They will sabotage it all. Well, so what's the, what's the point in me right? mentioning good news like uh, alternative uh, energy, the green movement, Germany is going to be totally independent from uh, fossil fuels uh, in the very near future uh, and all this good stuff. What's the point? What's the point? Okay. Wait a minute before you begin. And Monsanto is not like Monsanto's fighting back. I mean Monsanto, but they're finding out new information. Recently I read an article about Monsanto's involvement with the recumbent bovine growth hormone and uh, they were exposed, and uh, and guess what? The two, these two reporters that were told to investigate anything they wanted to investigate that worked for Fox News, well, they were both fired by Fox News for investigating and exposing the truth about recumbent bovine growth hormone made Bingo. by made by Monsanto. Bingo. They were immediately terminated. And there's a video that I posted on our Facebook group with the two reporters telling the story on how they got fired, how they were canned for, but they were told to investigate anything worthwhile that they wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you like them apples? Wow, it's nothing new. I mean, it's a joke. When people talk about fact-checking yeah. with Republicans. They called it the cancer milk. Cancer milk. Recumbent you know? bovine growth hormone made by Monsanto. Well, pretty soon you're going to have the law in effect that you can't say anything bad about a company or its products. Or you will go to jail. I say, I, I say every day, I say I hate corporate American CEOs stinking guts. Well, yeah, of course, but pretty soon that's going to be against the law. To see? say to say they're scumbags, or against like Stalin used to do, and when they throw them into the mental institution because it is oppositional defiance. Uh, the, you know the, the yeah. new uh, the new uh, disease that's in the DSM uh, yeah. what seven or whatever the hell it is. Like you uh, know, it's a mental people, disorder. People to, that you just want to when you see their douchebag looking faces, you just want to bash it in like what is that Peter Brabeck of Nestle's or John Brabeck yeah, Brabeck of the Nestle Corporation Mr. who Mr. says we have no right to drinking water people don't have any right to drinking water and the ugly turtle face ah, that's what I was that we got to look he's at the worst we got to look at his mug because because now he's the majority uh, he's Leader. a senator right yeah. yeah Senate majority so we have to see his ugly turtle face I'm talking about Mitch McConnell you know, but Miss, Mr. Mitch McConnell has got a banner up there on Facebook about getting the money out of politics. Now you know that's a joke. Yeah, like the Clear Skies Amendment. He's, he's talking out of both sides of his turtle mouth, his well, beak. You, you gotta, you gotta ask, why? What are they trying to do by doing that? The Republicans. They're trying to make nice nice because they want to win in 2016. Maybe they're getting names by whoever signs the petition. All right. Now, um, uh, okay. what, do you, what do you call uh, uh, You know what? I've always wore my emotions on my sleeve. 
Yeah, I, I, um, I never, I was never the type to bite my tongue. Oh. Neither is Jesse Ventura and people like that and Ralph Nader. If somebody, if I like somebody, you'll know it. If I don't like you or I hate you, I just won't, I'll just won't talk to you. I'll ignore you. I'm not like a phony. I can't pretend. Sycophant. A sycophant, like have a big grin on my face and say, oh my God, look who, look who's sitting at that table right across from us. It's Donald Trump with his daughter Ivanka. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. no. Shall we be tolerant? Uh, uh well, since since he was complaining that Obamacare should be ab uh, abolished uh, 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 lately, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure Mr. Trump has the best health insurance money can buy. How many people are saying that Obamacare should be improved? People love Obamacare, and yeah. rightfully so. So you know, why <laughs> can't it be improved? You have poor... <coughs> well, Bernie um, Sanders said it right. We're really supposed to yes, have the, yes, yes, the single payer universal health care. But we don't. We don't. But we don't. That's right. what we're supposed to have. You know, we so could have had. We, we got to work with what we got. We yes. could have had it when Obama first took office and the Democrats were in charge for the first two years. We could have had single payer, but they didn't get it done. No. All right, let me read this. Members of Congress will get one thousand dollars per month in taxpayer subsidies to pay for their cars. Okay, and uh, hey, that that's enough for a Mercedes, I think. Um, contributors can now donate one hundred and... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Contributors can now donate three hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars per year that's ten times as much to political party committees, giving the wealthy and special interests even more influence. Mm -hmm. The federal budget deficit will over four hundred billion added to our national debt. There will be four hundred billion added to our national debt to the federal budget. Okay. It's not money to help the poor and the little guy, that's for sure. Okay, D.C. voters will be overruled for choosing to legalize marijuana and subsidies to big oil companies will increase. Yeah. And yet, there is no money to help the poor, including our veterans. America keeps voting for these people. This appears to me that Satan will be in full control of the United States of America when the new Republican takeover occurs I guess January of 2015 uh, so you wanted it people you've got it you kept on when you vote you keep on throwing America under the bus is that how the, uh, the cliche goes you and that's all I have to say on that. You have the floor. Well, the old house has put a bill before the Senate, the spending bill. Yeah. For $1.1 trillion. Wow, big spenders, these Republicans. Spend, 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 taxpayers' money. And one of the provisions was snuck into the bill that they will allow the United States taxpayer to again bail out Wall Street again if Wall Street does its shenanigans again which they will allow there will be it is a change of Dodd-Frank bill it is they will allow there will be no regulation they will allow the derivatives back again <gasps> And the Wall Street will do the same thing they did before. And you know what? And we will again bail them out. And you know what else the Republicans uh, will allow Wall Street to do? They will give unlimited um, 
of freedom for Wall Street to gamble with our savings. That's what it is. That's what it's being allowed, the speculation. Yeah, yeah. Not, Not their right. money. Yeah. It's our money. That our money so this is a, a, a legal stealing on the part of Republicans. Well, so it, was the first bailout legal stealing. The TARP and, and what came after that. The trillions, yeah, well, trillions. They're not. They're not shy about about their uh, corruption. They're, they they're pretty obvious, and yeah, and, and stupid Americans keep on reelecting them. Exactly. They keep, they keep going. They keep going. I mean, these people put it right out there. What corporate ass yeah. kissers they are, and yet the old uh, 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 mountain men and women. You know, they keep on going, well, because oh, them those dark. Democrats, you know, they're baby killers. Those Democrats and them dar Democrats, and they're, they're letting all these these illegal immigrants into America is to take our jobs, and uh, all these uh, brown-skinned peoples, uh, you know, are taking our jobs away, and that Obama this, and that Obama's that, and I'm not forgetting all about G.W. Bush and Dick Cheney, the inherited mess. That Obama, Obama this, Obama that. It's just excuse because they don't want the black man in the White House. They're just. That's one of the main main reasons. Another is it's just so stupid to believe whatever they hear from Fox News, you know, and they don't research anything. They don't do their homework. They just. It's easy to sit in front of. The television, uh, uh, with crumbs of Doritos falling on their on their bare chest as they watch Fox News, drinking that cheap beer, well, you and, know, and believing the the conservative propaganda. And, as and, and I said last religious week, religious nuts that know nothing about the God of the Bible. And they get the FaceTime. Yes, that's another okay, thing. They're that's getting FaceTime. One of the problems. They get the FaceTime. But I said last week. Remember that the. A lot of these uh, people in these red states, and they don't have cable. They don't have Fox News. They got satellites. So what they're getting? Maybe, yeah. They don't have satellite either. That's five dollars or something a month or whatever. Well, it is. how Come how on. how poor do you think these people are? Pretty it's, poor. It's the twenty first century, there, Billy Bowl. They got Billy refrigerators. Bowles. They're probably overnourished, like the, uh, sen the senator jerks say about our poor. They're overnourished. Overnourished. Yeah. Over overnourished yeah. with toxic crap, f food and refined carbohydrates and sugar. Yeah. Not overnourished with but, healthy organic foods. But according to these, like uh, these experts on uh, uh, health and everything, if you're a little overweight. Experts. Yeah. yeah, if you're a little overweight, you're overnourished. You know. I don't think they should use the word nourish or nourishment. I think <laughs> they should. In, they should not in that, uh, that context. I think they sure. should just use like the terms, you know, fat, fat, or you know, too much, a little too much calories in compared to your expenditure, like you know, uh, uh, calories well, in, calories carbs. out. Well, you know, fat people. If you look at a dating site, you know they want to they want to put down things like uh, 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 more to love or Rubenesque or or, or 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 voluptuous, curvaceous. What? Hey, three letters, fat. As Gary Knoll said, call it what it is, fat. No fat person Rubenesque. is healthy. Rubenesque. None. That's true. That's true. Because they may be jolly, or whatever. Listen, but they're not healthy. If you don't see any abdominal muscles, that means your body fat percentage is too high. Because your Id ideal body fat percentage will allow you to see muscular definition. You know. So <clears throat> you can call it anything you want. You can call it uh, uh, more to love, Rubenesque. Uh, Pleasantly plump, uh, whatever the hell you want to call it, curvaceous, voluptuous. Voluptuous. It's fat. They're just excuses. Buxom. This, no, buxom. Bu no, buxom is nice. <laughs> That's worth its weight in, in platinum. Buxom. Oh, no. 
Well, it's still overnourished. Bugs him. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, it's like they vote against their best interests. I know I say this every week. It makes no sense at all. But then again, the book of Revelation says the whole world is deceived. Oh, there was a gentleman on your your group the other day. Yeah, they don't believe when they hear bad news on my group. They no, the, the banner was up there quoting Revelation 12, 9. Oh, Oh, and, and he and said he didn't believe it. Look Why at that. Well, he can't, can't believe scripture. Look What's wrong with this idiot? I, look it up. Look it up. It's got the verse right there. Yeah. On the scroll. It's got the verse. It tells you where to look it. Look for Honest it. The God, what an idiot. You know, uh, 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 and, and there are people who don't believe that... Uh, Michelle Bachman actually says these things, or Sarah Palin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. They think that the the they call they call us libtards instead of liberals. The liberals are lying. They don't believe that they actually say these stupid things. Yes, they really are that stupid. They really are dumbasses, and yeah. you dumbasses voted Vote for them. For them, exactly. It takes a dumbass to know to like a dumbass, right? Birds of a feather flock together. Well, as I say, hey Steve. As I say, he wants to go to your tea. Oh, as know. I say, what happens in those instances is the fact that these people don't vote for actually what their their uh, politicians say. They vote for the party because the party is against baby killers. Bingo! Yeah, yeah. The fertilized egg is a baby in her eyes, and uh, open up. And and, and gays shouldn't have any rights yeah, at all. You, well, and that's that's the whole. Let me thing. let me let Steve the cat out. That's the whole agenda. <sighs> you gonna go outside, Steve? All right. It's the whole agenda, baby. You know what I mean? So that's how they do it. They don't have to have Fox News tell them what to do. They don't have to have this, that, and the other thing. Oh, they they suck it up and they they believe that conservative propaganda and I don't know. You know, yeah, they vote they vote based on these on their cult religion. Ah, there you go, bingo. If they're Baptist minister, that they're the good guys. The other guys, the bad guys. They have the moral high ground. If their Baptist minister is dancing with. Snakes with rattlesnakes in his hand and gibberish. Yeah, and speaking gibberish, which is otherwise known as tongues, and he's dancing up and down the aisle with snakes, and he says that uh, oh, Democrats are, are are wicked and evil, and uh, and 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 they're um, they're they're big sinners and they're baby killers and this that and the other yeah. thing, and they they love gays. And, Automatically, these <coughs> hillbillies would automatically vote Republican. That's exactly how they, it's done. They won't even. I don't even think they need to watch debates. Nope. To determine who they're going to vote for. Nope. 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 United there States. There is nothing that can change their ideology. That's what we have to learn. The United States is a laughing stock, and rightfully so, with in the eyes of the world. And they're, not only that. It is a terrorist in the eyes of the world. And there you got the CIA. Now that the report is out, Torture. condemning them. Oh, you got Dick Cheney saying that the report is crap and he'd do it again. Well, Dick Cheney also said uh, G -W, it's the G.W. Bush's fault. No, he can't. He can't right. explain for you, Didn't you see the, uh, the he article? He for it. Well, the both he of said them. he'd do it again. The both of them. The report is crap. He'd do it again. Well, the article says... So he, he don't have to blame He, he was putting more blame on G.W. Bush. Actually, he was the president at the time. Not G.W. Bush. G.W. Bush was put in there because he was malleable. And that's what the Republicans like in a president. Someone they can control. Very conforming. He was conformist. He was, he was controllable, yeah. That's correct. That's what they like. Dick Cheney has, um, even though he has a mechanical heart, he has a lot more 
I think he has more intelligence and more uh, experience, of course, in... He game. is truly without natural affection. Yeah, he is, he is the demon that uh, probably is responsible for that whole mess in the Middle East. He is the first Borg of our generation. The first? Borg! Borg? Star Trek! Oh, oh, okay. The Borg! He is a Borg! Yeah. He's got an artificial heart. Can't feel. No empathy. Sociable. Without so uh, uh, natural affection. Yeah, to Timothy, yeah. Uh, okay. so he's a sociopath. Yeah. Which is, you know... Clear. Like uh, most conservatives, you know, more, more or less. Uh, corporate, more. C corporate CEOs, yeah, more. More than less. More. You know, corporate CEOs in America, they, they just, uh, everything know is them by their fruits. They can, okay. they can care. What happens to human life unless it's their own rich relatives and friends? Oh, then they want to make the silos. They want to be able to, you know, weather the big storm that's coming. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. Now we shall sink our teeth into these readings. Uh, well, I want to add something to the okay, uh, bailout crap all the shit right. that's going on. The progressive, liberal, whatever you want to call it, part of the Democratic Party, led by Elizabeth Warren, is now showing some teeth. It's about Since they will not be voting for that spending bill provision. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren is quite upset. Yeah, as well she should be. As well she should be, and, 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 and she should have the other famous Democrats by her side, too. She shouldn't be alone. She should have... Uh, well, she has about 70. Like Chuck Schumer... Um, uh, Schumer is not a progressive. No? He's a Democrat, a corporate Democrat. What, what about um, um, Robert Menendez? Forget it. He's a corporatist? Corporatist, too. Really? Yeah. Al Franken? Cor Maybe. Maybe. Al Franken, is, you know, he's a little disappointing to me. Nobody, so hears, nobody hears from Al Franken. You know, he does, he's does a bunch of stuff up there uh, in the Senate. But there. he doesn't get in front of a camera. He, he, no FaceTime. No. I don't see no FaceTime with he him. He doesn't even step up and demand FaceTime. Yeah. I want to be interviewed. I have a lot to say. I'm sure, see if he says that, he's a senator. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, they, they're progressive. Liberal, if you want to call it. And they're them. not afraid to speak their mind in, in, in public, for the yeah. public to see. Yeah, well, yeah. You know. Now, is it true Barack Obama uh, will not buck Republicans with the Trans-Pacific um, Partnership uh, crap? It's all in secret. Nobody's it's all being done in secret. Nobody's really. I wonder why. If you do something in secret, you know what that means? You're hiding something. You're hiding something. And that's what these trade uh, deals ha are. They are done in secret. Well, I watched um, Barack Obama, President Obama, as a guest on Stephen Colbert. And. Uh, well, Obama's going to cave on this spending bill. I mean, he already has. Because he wants to get something done. Okay. Something done? Yeah. Well, he did he say to he's going to done. utilize his veto pen, which is good to hear. Well, he ain't going to use it against this spending bill, that's for sure. In other words, he's going to okay giving more subsidies? This was a bipartisan effort. Giving subsidies to big oil? And bailouts to the Wall Street. Oh, really? I mean, we've got the subsidies for big oil and all this shit for how long? But, but this stuff has got to stop. But they but, but, but they cut food stamps. Who cares about that? When you can give money to Wall Street. So, Democrats are in favor of giving even more money to Wall Street and cutting food stamps. That's, except that's what those, you're trying to tell me? Yes. It's already been signed off on, except for Elizabeth Warren and the maybe 69 other Democrats which are progressive. 
the rest of the Democrats uh, aren't progressive. They're sellouts. Progressive. They're sellouts, and they've already signed off on this. Like the Democrats that did not back Barbara Bono in New Jersey and allowed Chris Christie to get reelected. Those kind of Democrats. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what are, who, are, who are they? Senators Dodd and Baucus? What? That? Hold on. Senators Dodd and Baucus of Connecticut who opposed. Uh, the uh, uh, single-payer uh, national uh, health care way back when. I don't know about God. Marcus, maybe. Yeah, they, they were in favor of, they were against God, having God and Barney Frank wrote the bill to start regulating Wall Street. This is the, the this new thing that's been put in this spending bill is changing things in God, friend. Let's see, well, it will change. Barack Obama did not say anything like bad about the Keystone Pipeline when he was with uh, Stephen Colbert. No, because he's probably for it. It's going to produce thirty-five jobs, oh, full-time wow. jobs. I'm wow. going to sneeze. Thirty-five full-time jobs, yeah. Okay. Ha! Excuse me. Really? Okay. <coughs> Let's sink our teeth. Alright. Alright. Well, I give her a lot of credit. I mean, I, you know, Elizabeth Warren and uh, Bernie Sanders, I mean, for, you know, uh, getting out there, regardless how many people are supporting you, getting, getting out there and telling the truth. So I got to salute. Yeah. Two. But the problem is, if they keep fighting too long, the spending bill doesn't go through, and the government shuts down. You know what happened to the Republicans last time when they shut down the government? What? They got elected! Ah! Ah! how stupid fucks the Americans are, really. Stupid fucks. Oh, let me not forget to... Say hello to my very near, dear, close friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. Greetings. And to the one and only, my good friend and former WWE pro wrestling star and trainer extraordinaire, Mr. Ken Thiessen of Boca Raton, Florida. Hello, Mr. Boca Ken Thiessen. Yeah. And his uh, brother, I believe his name is um, John Thiessen who for the past 20 years has dedicated himself to helping poor children and the underprivileged in New York City, was oh. recently on the, um, on TV, on, um, oh, what was his name? Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey? Yeah, Steve Harvey Show. Uh -huh. A, a black comedian who had a, a situation comedy. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, and uh, it will be on. It will be aired early this week. I think Monday or Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. But anyway, okay. I salute the brother of Ken Thiessen, John Thiessen, for 20 years of uh, dedicated work to help the poor and children buying toys for. Ch Four children in New York City for the past 20 years, and uh, he has many fundraising events. So look him up and watch him on Steve Harvey show. I'm sorry, I had a brain freeze. Steve Harvey is uh, not difficult to uh, to remember. I just had to take Benadryl for my allergies. Benadryl has a uh, severe calming effect on you, on a person. Put it that way. Anyway, go ahead. The scientific organization that operates the world's biggest particle accelerator says it's gearing up for a second three-year run. I didn't know they shut it down. Well, they did. Was it the Hedron Collider? In the Sw large Switzerland? Hedron Collider buried beneath the Swiss-French border near Geneva 
was instrumental in the discovery of the Higgs bus, a subatomic bus, it's called the God particle. A subatomic particle that had long been theorized but never confirmed until last year. The European Organization for Nuclear Research, known by its French acronym CERN, C-E-R-N, said Friday that the Atom Smasher will operate at almost double the energy of its first run. It says the first particle beams are expected to shoot round the collider's 16.8-mile tunnel in March. Okay. CERN's Director for Accelerators and Technology, Frederick Bordry, said the collider is almost like a new machine after a two-year pause in operation. So we're going to get a new and improved Hedron Collider. Yeah. Maybe we'll find a couple of more God particles. I'd like to take all the Republican uh, Congress people and Senators and put them inside the Hedron Collider. <laughs> I don't think we get anything from them. No, we just have a lot of, a lot of squash seeds. Rock yeah, melon heads. Melon heads, yeah, yeah. a lot of smashed pumpkins. Yeah. And seeds blowing around inside, but, you know. The season of giving is upon us. It's the time of the season for loving. Some people may be considering purchasing a puppy or a kitten for themselves or for people that are on their list of giving. I am very much against impulse buying of pets. You must, you must do a lot of research on their care and you must be able to provide a home for the rest of that animal's life. No cute, cutesy pie impulse buying. It's a life. It's a member of your family. Continue. While it is rarely a good idea to obtain an animal, for someone who is unaware that such a gift is going to be theirs, many people will do it anyway. Living creatures are not disposable objects. I urge anyone who is determined to purchase a puppy or a kitten to visit their nearest animal show. It's a nice thing to do. They will find not only puppies and kittens, but dogs and cats of all ages and yeah. sizes. Yeah. Or rescue organizations. If you want a pure breed, there are rescue organizations for many pure breeds online. More than 20% of shelter animals in general are purebred. That many. I you know, them. I don't understand why it exists because they're so friggin' cute. But do you, you know there's a, there's a rescue organization for adopting English Bulldogs? Why would anyone, why would anybody want to give up such a great dog as an English Bulldog? Or a Bull Mastiff, or a Rottweiler, or any of those pure breeds? Ah, I don't know. Speaking of dogs, I opened the door last night to check on one of my cats. Yeah. And a dog, a fairly big dog, came walking across the street. To say hi? I don't know. Or to have you for a snack. I thought maybe it was wild, yeah. So I shut the door. Well, if it looks like a coyote, shut the door. It was like a light tan, beige tan. Pit bull? No, it was a big dog. Ah. Big dog, but thin. Somebody was obviously walking it, I guess. Yeah, without a leash. That was, uh, yeah, it didn't have no leash. Yeah, and and uh, and uh, some people are smart asses. Even though it's against the law, they let their dog shit on other people's property. And if, if they get caught, they get fined. And that was like between two and three o'clock in the morning. Somebody by me 
walks their dog very late, in the wee hours, so nobody catches them, and they crap on my and they leave it on property, and they leave it. <coughs> I would love to, to take, not the pooch, not the animal, but the owner's no, face, and not. smear it into the fecal matter. <laughs> oh, you don't know, I would go, I would forget about it, man. I, I'd be ready to, to fight. The remaining, the 80%, tend to be lovable and loving mixed breeds. It's true. Keep in mind that when a shelter animal is adopted, two lives are saved. The one adopted and the one that is waiting for more space to become available. Oh. Well, I realize these shelters are on a budget and they cannot they cannot and probably do not feed them the proper food or the best food but i think i think a lot a lot of these rescue organizations take donations right yes they do okay which is nice because there's a lot of people out there with compassion that love animals and um why can't we uh give the donations that we give to wall street to them I, th I think I think uh, I believe in, in I believe in uh, more strict animal rights. Uh, I'm talking about brutality and torturing of yeah, I think, animals. I think the laws have been changed a bit, and now uh, animal cruelty uh, people actually can go to jail. So it's heartbreaking. You know, it's heartbreaking. In some instances, what 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 some people do to dogs and cats, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's also heartbreaking that. The police, uh, when they're uh, snooping around your property, and if your dog is back there and your dog, you know, they're, 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 they're shooting people's dogs. Yeah, they off them. Blowing them they away. They off them for no reason at all. You know, I mean, uh, a cop without a warrant, as far as I'm concerned, is trespassing on, on private property. He is, yes, indeed. But of course, we can't indict the cops. But they won't do their job. I was reading many articles of uh, police wrongdoings throughout the country, yeah. the U.S. and police brutality, and they all have one thing in common: that they are, they will all get away with uh, uh, criminal charges. Yeah, go up there and and and, and all and, of them. Go up there and uh, search for Lionel's. Uh, video the other day about three days ago. Every one of them you explain got the off. Thing. Yeah. On cri even the cop who uh, I don't know if it was allegedly or if it, re it was proven tied up this woman and sexually abused her and he got off scot-free. He got off scot-free, you know. I believe there was one who uh, didn't tie her up or anything, but, you know, uh, accosted a young kid. It's a police young chief, girl. I think, uh, down, uh, down, down Demdar, one of the Demdar red states, yeah. down yonder, down yonder in Demdar red states. Yeah. That had his way with somebody. Uh, you know, well, uh, you, know uh, you, you, you always hear these people, well, not all cops are bad. That's true. But yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. Lately, huh? until you prove it to me, I'm not accepting it, because all cops are bad. Okay. I hear. I I hear that uh, until proven otherwise. I, I hear that there's a rivalry between the police and and firemen. Fire In New and, York. Yeah. Well, firemen are heroes. Yeah. You never hear of a fireman doing anything wrong, but but cops don't really have nice things to say about the fire department. Yeah. Because uh, I guess because the police are getting all the heat nowadays. As well, they should. Yeah, because well, of what they're doing. Yeah, I because mean, they are a military organization. I mean, today. according to the Constitution, you do have the right to peacefully protest, right? That's correct. Not to be maced in the face, er no. beaten, and arrested for peacefully protesting. That's correct. But peace, peaceful protesting does not mean... They are protesting right now in Washington, D.C.? They've been protesting in New York, too, for... Um, They've had die-ins, yes. For Eric Gardner, and, uh, you know, all over the country. But, but, you know, the local news never televises. Many of these protests are not, or all of them are not televised. That's correct. In the local news. That's Shame correct. on you, you uh, American uh, media. Shame on you for not 
protest. I mean, for not uh, covering er everything worthy of news. Mm -hmm. And this is and a big protest is worthy of news. Certainly is. You but know. you know, uh, underlying all of this stuff is another is another big problem with the police. Eric Garner, taken just for instance, was at the at the worst selling loose cigarettes. Very trivial. Very trivial. Very this is trivial. not a capital offense. You don't die for it. Right. So and therefore... And, and if you're being... Yeah, if you're being... Uh, um, um, if you're under arrest and you say, I can't breathe, that means I can't breathe. That means stop whatever you're doing and let me breathe. Well, the point of it is, you don't, you don't choke somebody's life out of them for selling loose cigarettes. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's That's like a, the point. You be, it's like behaving like a fascist stormtrooper. New Jersey yeah. is now going to be buying tasers for uh, a lot of its police departments. Oh, because they want to walk around and if they don't like your face, they, they want to just tase you. Now, tasers are not benign. And in some instances, if you shoot somebody with a taser, it makes them more violent. It, under certain circumstances. That is correct. Maybe if they're on certain drugs. Meth or something like that. You yeah, know, they drugs, go out of yeah. their minds, baby. They're nuts. Well, I would, I would love to see police brutality actually backfire on the cops that are perpetrating this brutality. I would love to see... Uh, I, love, I love to see karma and justice prevail. Well, I got news for you. You can go back just to the 60s, down south. It was the same. So and nothing has really changed. And the Republicans... Against blacks. And the I'm Republicans want to mm -hmm. undo everything that the Civil Rights Movement That's correct. did. And women's rights. They want to undo... That's correct. Women's rights. That's correct. All civil rights they want to undo. That's correct. They what they're they're what's the word degressive instead of progressive? Regressive. Regressive instead of progressive. So, like Jesse Ventura says, science comes to a halt when the Republicans are in charge. Bingo. Bingo. Regressive. Regressive. And there's the, there's there's the big problem because the the uh, we had what we called in history the Renaissance. The Renaissance, yeah. And the time before that, when we got out of the Dark Ages. Yeah, the, well, the Dark Ages were right before the Middle Ages, but yeah. the Middle Ages were kind of dark, too. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the Renaissance was there. Yeah, then the Renaissance, in the, in the, in the, in the Middle that's Ages. The, the word Renaissance. 13th, 14th, 15th century. The word Renaissance means... It means a, a renewing. Yeah. But the point is that in the Renaissance and, and stuff of that nature... Peoples were allowed to have ideas, to have theories, to have freedom and liberty to buck the religious system. Yeah, like all your scientists of that time. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, 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 Isaac Newton, uh, Galileo, so on yeah, and so on. Before that, all C scientists, all ideas had to be within the purview of the religion that was powerful at the time in whatever context. The Pope was... was um, oh, speaking about the Pope, I got something to say about the Pope. I forgot to say it before. Oh yeah, why does he think that... Um, why does he think that animals can go to heaven? Now? That's what I wanted to say. I got a little confused about when well, he said Well, first that. of all, nobody goes to heaven. Okay? Animals or people. I hope he's not getting uh, Alzheimer's. Obviously, he has never read uh, Revelation 21, first of all. But, nobody goes to heaven. And the Bible is silent on animals. Animals have the same nafish, that is the soul, as humans do. And they die. The life energy. They have not committed any sins, but they die. Just like humans. 
But the Bible is silent on them. However, in the millennium, the animals will not be eating each other. Okay, there will be a change. Yeah. In their structure. No pr predation, predation, no predatory. No predators. Exactly. So, the point is that they don't go to heaven. Yeah. The animals. And once you become resurrected and God, you are God, like God. Yeah. You have no need of animals. You have no need of uh, of a significant other or all of this human stuff. Yeah, it's kind of nice okay. to cuddle up to a cute, loyal... You will have a bigger job to do than cuddling up to a cute, loyal canine. A job to do? Yeah. But if everything in life... Populating if, the universe. If everything in life, life, life is hunky-dory, Why? what do you do with all that time? Populating the universe. Correct. I thought you can't you can't have sex when you're a perfect spiritual being. The people that you have planted have sex, not you. You are their god. Well, could I is there an option? Could I no. like could I like unless you want to be burned up forever in the great lake of fire. Yeah, but yeah, but that's not the people assigned to repopulate the universe. They, they're not going into the lake of fire. Because if they went into the lake of fire, how would they repopulate the universe? Yeah, but what does that have to do with what I just said? Nobody knows what's going to... The resurrected people are gods. Oh. They will have their planet right. to plant people that will then eventually become gods again and then they will go on to other planets i guess if you don't same thing you won't miss you won't desire what you don't have if you don't if you don't have a need to eat or have sex then you won't have those feelings you won't feel hungry you won't feel horny you know you won't have sex organs so if you don't have it and you don't feel the desire or the need for it, then you won't miss it. So I guess it's not a catastrophe you after all. You are God at that point. Right. So These you have a different... are not important to you. They are not a part of you. They are not a part of you. Yeah. Right. Just yeah, like... God has no sex organs. Just like an angel or a demon or angel. has no desire for that, even though the book of Enoch That's says right. that they the may... de demons had sex with mortal women. Well, they didn't have sex. And produced... They just, they just went into bodies. Evil giants. That doesn't oh, okay. mean that they had sex. Okay. All right, they may have, you know, possessed a body here and there and banged a couple of people, you know? That's all. Okay. We're going to take a break, a lunch break, <laughs> and we will join uh, our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, for his words of wisdom and promo. Cool. And then we will return to this, the balance of this show. Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen. For the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. 
Okay, we are back. Thank you very much, William H. Moore the Third, for your promo and words of wisdom. Um, and um, I was just um, talking to uh, the Reverend Dr. Bill about my little culinary accomplishment. Uh, I made, um, uh, for the first time, I made uh, sourdough oatmeal pancakes from scratch. And I, I, I cooked it on my uh, cast iron griddle, mm. you know, that fits over two jets, as seen on the web. But I actually ground my own oat flour. <laughs> and all I did was put rolled oats in a uh, in a good blender and just put it on the highest uh, level on liquify and it turned it into a fine powder gradually but you know I did not have to wait too long and uh, they came out absolutely delicious uh, they were they were great I you know I I mixed the batter with my <coughs> bread machine so I don't have to do it and everything came out great as long as you put in the liquid first your eggs milk filtered water uh vegetable oil you know the sourdough starter which i make also the liquids go in first flour goes in last because you don't want any caking of the flour on the bottom and that's it and they, I, they were absolutely delicious they actually tasted better than the, the uh, than the whole wheat pancakes. I, I I like the flavor of oat. Oaty oaty oaty. Oaty oaty. So anyway, um, <coughs> maybe uh, maybe I should pour in some of that coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Then th that should be an interesting mm -hmm. fla flavor. Yeah. But anyway, back to the show. Ah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep. Is morality flexible? Uh, shouldn't be. Is torture acceptable in the right circumstances? Not credible. Jesse Ventura said it's not credible. No. Because people will admit to anything just to stop the torturing. I remembered the name of that movie we were discussing the other day. Mark of the Devil. Mark of the Devil and Mark of the Devil 2. It's an old movie? Yes. It goes back to the 60s, I believe. Wow. Yeah. There is, that was it dealing with torture under the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. Well, people will admit to anything, just to stop the pain. Please, stop in the pain. Yes, yes, I agree with everything you say. There is much discussion on how imminent the terrorist threat or how successful enhanced interrogation is. If we perceived the chance of another 911 at, say, 90%, and that torture could produce results to, to stop that from happening, would that excuse our actions? Can our code of what we as a government are permitted to do not have absolutes? Can we say that no matter the level of our fear or the certainty of what shall be uncovered, there is never justification for torture? No, I know a great alternative. And it's simple. You just give the person an injection of uh, sodium pentothal, is that what they call it? The truth yeah. serum? And you yeah. put them on a polygraph. After the sodium pentothal takes effect, you put them on a polygraph. Hey. That's all. That's a lot more credible than torture. Well, yeah, because even when you torture somebody and they give up information to you, you have to check it. To see that it's correct, right? Well, the if you're looking for information, you still have to to verify it. You're yeah. right. 
So why not just, you know, do do it the psychological, the scientific way, yeah. and drug them, and polygraph and verify them. it with the polygraph and verify it that way. Well, that wouldn't. I I don't think that would let out the devil's side of our character. Yeah, that would make too much sense. But, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, people like Dick Cheney. Yeah, they, he wouldn't go for that. I think he's more of a sadist. Yeah. To go for the scientific approach. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the logical approach to yeah. torture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or must there always be moments, such as the kidnapping of children and their planned execution, when moral absolutes crumble in the face of reality? Leadership comes with responsibility. Oh, uh, unless you're Republican, of course. <laughs> yeah, then, no, no, no responsibility. A mandate to demonstrate to our citizens and to the world those qualities that make them, make us models to emulate. It's the responsibility of knowing what must be done, even in the most difficult of times. After reading the review of the Senate Intelligence Report on the CIA's detention and interrogation program, <coughs> excuse me, after 911, one wonders if this report will only serve those bent on our destruction. Do we really care if a terrorist who wants to kill us is deprived of sleep? order to get information that can save thousands of lives? Does a highly unpleasant technique such as waterboarding really constitute torture when the purpose is to extract information that can save lives? Well, uh, John McCain and Jesse Ventura, who was waterboarded, by the way, yeah. say it is torture. Well, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're depriving a person of oxygen. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like momentary suffocation over and over and over. I'm assuming that. Jose A. Rodriguez Jr., in his book, Hard Measures, How Aggressive CIA Actions After 911 Saved American Lives, details how enhanced interrogation techniques extracted critical information in preventing future terror attacks. Right. He also explains how second guessing and political correctness are now hampering our efforts to protect American lives. Captured terrorists are not about to give us information about pending attacks by our being nice to them. In a war, harsh methods are sometimes needed to prevent larger casualties. Hand wringing by the liberal press and misguided politicians only undermines those committed to our safety and well-being. The angry responses to the report on CIA torture and the opinion offered by so many that we are justified in doing evil because the terrorists use evil leaves me baffled. 
since when does one form of evil justify perpetuating another form of evil in response? What happened to our laws? The Constitution? The concept of right and wrong? And our claim to leadership of the free world? If there is no difference between us and them, we have lost. Okay? Why do so many people seem to fear Ebola more than heart disease or the flu? when they are far more likely to die of the latter two diseases. Yeah, because the latter two are much more cumulative and slow progressive, slow progressing, where Ebola is, is a relatively quick kill. People don't fear that they are more likely to die of Ebola than heart disease or the flu. Instead, they fear <laughs> epidemic might start. Yeah, pandemic, right. And if they contract Ebola, they are far more likely to die oh. immediately. Heart disease is slow moving and treatable. And less likely to survive a bout of the illness, the, the death rate from the flu is, is far lower. One cannot disparage people who fear Ebola more than heart disease or the flu. What amounts to a misapplication of grammar at best. At worst, the analogy is just plain bad logic or an effort to make average Americans look dumb. I can assure you they are. Scotty Ball, I have no idea. That's what bothers me. But anyway, that was past news because we don't, don't hear about it anymore. No. And now, for a change of pace, something a little lighter. My ex-wife and I had numerous problems throughout our marriage. I left several times, but always went back. The last time I left, I filed for divorce. It's been a few years, and I am starting to miss her. We talk 
briefly every once in a while, mostly because of our grandchildren. I am currently living with a divorce woman. We get along great, but never talk of marriage. Lately, my live-in mentioned getting married. It has hit me like a ton of bricks. I don't want to. I want to go back to my ex. Come back to old Buttercup. Remember that from the honeymooners? I don't know if you take me back. If my current relationship falls apart, I have no place to go, but I don't care. <laughs> I stand lower over the I don't know how to go about talking to my ex about going back to her. I don't even know if she will take me back. I am currently not seeing a psychiatrist. Though I have in the past, and I will probably do so again. This is Amy Dickinson. Your pattern of leaving and reconciling with your former wife seems to be continued. Because you have no, no specific reason to believe she is interested in reconciliation. Takes two to do that tango. You should see this as a pattern. That is about you, not her. You could assume that even if you did reconcile with your former wife, you would eventually want to leave again. Well, oh, yes, some broke them up to begin with. Unless, you know, to fix, to fix the marriage or to, to repair the relationship, it takes two people to work towards it, not just one. Put yourself in the place of the woman who lives with you and presumably loves you. And break your heart. How would you feel if you, you wanted to connect yourself to your partner and she wanted to bounce back to her ex? If your former wife is not interested in reconciling with you ever how will you cope with that you should be honest with your current part if marriage is not in the cards you must tell her the cards this is an ideal matter to sort out in therapy therapy helps people identify and work through behavioral and emotional patterns. Yeah, okay. You know, I mean, it's work. Relationships are, are hard work, marriages, uh, monogamy, it's all work, you can't do it alone. Uh, this is another Amy Dickens. Excuse me folks, if I, I appear to be having a little hay fever, just came out of nowhere. Alright, continue. My 
best friend came to my home last weekend after her breakup with her boyfriend. And she bought a bottle of scotch. Hope oh, it was good scotch. Johnny Walker? Or, uh, what do you call those? Uh, single malt? Some people don't want like it. Some people do. Anyway. anyway. My husband joined us and we kept drinking and things started to get cozy among the three of us. Hey, the best aphrodisiac for a woman is alcoholic beverages. That's an old fact. Not for a man. <laughs> My husband had sex with my friend. In front of her? And me! Menage a trois? In succession. So they were so drunk that her, his wife permitted all this to happen. Girls, see what I mean? Sloppy sick. Oh, oh, he he banged their friend first because she was what uncharted territory. She was a because f they were drunk. She, she was, but her friend is a is a new brand new slab of of meat for him. What? Yeah. New experience. So she he banged her first. I encouraged this at the time. Hey, she encouraged it. Open marriage, or just they needed more spice in their in their marriage. The next, <laughs> the next morning, how long did the manager last? Apparently, not long enough. I would say. The next morning, she left our house without saying a word. She texted me Yikes. that she will never see me again as long as I am married to my husband. Oh, where did this come from? She wants to the friend after the one incident after she was drunk. The one fling she had at the party she wants expects him to leave his wife. She didn't say that. What do you mean see her? See I'm him again. Be back to see her friend again, ever. Wait, who, who, wait, who's the one that, that ended the friendship? The wife, right? No. The friend. The friend. Is ending the friendship with... As long as she is married to her husband. So she feels so awkward about what happened, she's willing to end her... It seems so. Her friendship. I feel totally terrible. I tried to talk about it with my husband, but he said it was the best sex experience of his life. With the friend? Uh-oh. <laughs> the drama gets worse. He shows no remorse. I think they should go on Jerry Springer or Steve Wilkos or Bill Cunningham or one of those sh shows. He even said 
he would like to do it again. As I was also involved, there was no case of cheating, right? I honestly don't remember much. Of course it was cheating. Did he cheat on me? Can I hold him responsible? It was my friend who brought the alcohol. And I, who persuaded my husband to join the party. Persuaded. Persuaded her husband. Uh, you see what, what Frankenstein monster they, they created? She created by doing this. Yeah. Amy says, The way I read this is that your friend now refuses to be around your husband or you as long as you are with him. It seems possible likely, really, that she didn't find the sexual experience consensual. <coughs> People who are drunk cannot give legal consent. <laughs> well, the, the, you're under the influence of alcohol. She had just been through a breakup and was emotionally vulnerable. <coughs> And there you go. Drunk. Besides, this was a horrible idea all around. So that made her even more vulnerable. I don't know how you can accuse your husband of cheating when you were present, encouraged this, and according to you, invited him to participate. So they're trying to place blame. Now that they sobered up, they're trying to find somebody to blame, and in reality, they're all, all three of them are to blame. They all are consenting adults. Alcohol or no alcohol, they should decide whether to put it behind them and, and never do it again, or get caught up in the perversion. <laughs> Don't blame your friend for bringing the bottle. It's not the Scotch's fault. Your husband might feel this was an awesome experience, but if he coerced or forced your friend and or you to have sex with him while you were blacked out drunk, then he is worse than a cheater. He is a rapist. Yeah, but I thought I thought. It his wife encouraged her husband to participate in this. Things to worry about are possible pregnancies and the police knocking on the door. Who's coming knocking on your door? Your friendship with this other woman is damaged, perhaps beyond repair. Listen, Look. I don't know how it could be rape if no, she didn't say it was it's rape. It's consensual. He, if, she said it was an if. If. Okay. I mean, you can't be, you can't have consensual sex after, and then after the fact, down the road, cry rape. I mean, it's These like things have consequences. It's like when they threw Mike Tyson in 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 prison for having sex with that uh, uh, Miss uh, uh, Rhode Island, uh, Desiree Washington, and it was it was a, she paid a consensual conjugal visit to Mike Tyson's hotel room, and they proved that. 
it, it appeared to be. And then later on, he, you know, say, say, she said that he forced himself on her, blah, blah, so on and so on, and he went to prison. Well, Mr. Tyson is not the brightest bulb in the chandelier. But they found her tampon carefully placed in a wastebasket across, you know, far from the bed. So she... So she, there was some, and she visited him around in the wee hours of the morning. So she visited committed sexuality whilst she was menstruating. Well, if somebody's, if, if there's a rape occurring, you know, there is, the tampon is not neatly placed anywhere. And then he, she visited him, she went to his hotel room in the wee hours. Well. All right. So. Uh, but why did he end up in jail? Because the courts did he have a bad lawyer? Because the courts favor women. Uh, uh feel sorry for the so-called weaker sex, or he had a bad lawyer. He didn't have a good lawyer. Something of that nature. Yeah, but what we're talking about women crying rape after the fact, after they have consensual sex. We're not. This is not about Mike Tyson's life. This is about. Women crying rape after consensual sex. Was the tampon used? Yes. So then it was taken out. Yes. So that, that says, to me, that means premeditation. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Uh -huh. So I wonder why he got this sentence. Maybe they're, they're, well, they were both, I mean, Desiree Washington was a black girl, you know, young uh, beauty queen, uh, so it's not that it just said, Indiana's it just racist. It indicates, the evidence indicates consensuality, that's all. Yeah, okay. so I'm using this as a an example yeah. for other cases that are consensual. Yeah. You know, I mean, anybody can have consensual <laughs> sex, and uh, if they have a disagreement with the person, an argument, they they suddenly what does that mean? They suddenly, if they're female, they can they can cry rape. And, oh, oh, rape, rape, rape! Put them in jail. Put them in jail because you're pissed at them. Yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's got to be proven. It's like you know, like it's like they don't prove. They don't really investigate uh, with a fine-tooth comb sexual harassment charges yeah. in, a, in a workplace. Anybody who doesn't like anybody can scream sexual harassment. Yeah. Well, just because you say it, that doesn't mean it's really sexual harassment. Yeah. You know, it's like an asking somebody on a date and complimenting their beauty is not sexual right. harassment unless the person continues more than once to ask the woman out on a date and she has to say no twice. Yeah. Three times. Then it's harassment. Yeah. But, you know, not, not right off the bat. And, P and men have been fired for that. Yeah. So, you know, where is the fairness? Where is the fairness in uh, the law? The Republicans say today? life is not fair. Well, that's an excuse for them to do their dirty deeds. I see. I see. That's just an excuse. Just like some people use the fact that uh, they're covered by the blood of Christ 
Therefore, they are totally forgiven of their sins. So they, they use that as an excuse to go around behaving like a selfish, no-good scoundrel asshole. And they feel, well, I can do anything I want. I'm a saved person. Where did he get that from? Somebody's telling them Yeah, that. somebody's telling them. Their pastor? Somebody's telling them, but guess what? You got to walk the walk. You can't Here, just talk the talk, brother. Here's a problem with a lot of people who say they read the Bible. Maybe they should read Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes used something called deductive reasoning. What does that mean? He weighed out all, all the facts That's that he had? Right. Pros and cons, all That's the facts correct. that were before him. So, these people who read the Bible and come up with statements like that and everything have no idea of deductive reasoning. They don't... From tell their them. reading. Right. In other words, check one scripture with another, etc., etc. Check the context of the scripture, how what he's talking yeah, about, they don't look at how. It. They don't know any of that. Like, like a Republican will, will blurt out one-liners like, uh, hey, if you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. If you don't work, you don't eat. So that means if a poor person can't find a job, and they're hungry, they shouldn't yeah, eat. But that's not their justification. Their justification is the Bible itself, because that's where that comes from. Yeah. That comes from Paul or Timothy or one right. of them, where they say what the work that he was talking about, Paul was talking about, was the work of God, not manual labor that you yeah. go and you know get paid for. It, that yeah. He was He's talking about those who will not do the work who when when God came to Ezekiel right. and and of course uh, with the Jonah too when right. God came to Jonah and Ezekiel he told them I want you to do this they didn't want to do it right that's the kind of work that Paul was talking about don't shirk the responsibility right you do the work. Why? You know what God did to Ezekiel? What's that? He took away his wife. So he wouldn't have any distractions. What about Job? He took away Job's family. The whole, okay, the whole Everything. King Caboodle, yeah. King Caboodle, to prove to Job that you were self-righteous, my friend. Start understanding that. Because Satan had a conversation at that time with God saying that Job... Yeah, he wasn't as good as he... You you know, you, you make him out you to make be. him out to be. Yeah. Well, again, uh, Satan just does that. He just likes to... Uh, he twists things, right? He likes to twist and rest. Like Republicans do. Yeah, they twist and rest. Well, I, I think Republicans like to uh, pick on the poor as a scapegoat... Like it, like it, I think it's a diversion for them. Look us over there. The oldest trick in the book. They're 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 using the poor as a diversion away from what they're really doing. That's correct, and a justification for their riches and how they obtained them. Yeah. Well, you could do that too if you just work harder and pulled yourself up by the boot. Yeah, apply, apply yourself. Yeah, right. There you go. Or, or like um, a TV evangelist using the uh, the statement from the Bible about tithing, giving a tithe, using that as an excuse for people to give it to them. Yeah. Ten percent. So that they can have a big Cadillac and a big mansion. Yeah. We're, we're talk I'm talking about Joel Osteen. Yeah. Joel Osteen. Well, living that's in a man. Yeah, but that's what most of those pastors do with the money that comes in. That's they, what I'm saying. They pocket it. Yeah. The Benny Hens, all of them. Yeah. I'm sure Pat Robertson 
doesn't have to want for uh, many things. No, no, he doesn't. Except one thing. A brain. Yeah, he's like the Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. If I only had a brain. He needs a brain. Yeah, his brain needs a lot of DHA, omega-3s, because he's he's out there with the statements that he makes. All right, I want to get at this thing, because it's been here uh, 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 about a week. Go ahead. Get rid of it. Galveston, Texas. Galveston, oh Galveston. Marine biologists have flown dozens of endangered sea turtles from Cape Cod to Galveston for treatment of hypothermia. Why do they have to send them that far? Couldn't to get warm. They send them to Miami. Possible. But are these turtles, maybe, you know, maybe they're not in Florida, naturally. How do they end up that far north getting hypothermia? I don't know yet. The 50 Kemp's Ridley sea turtles, a critically endangered species, were shocked by recent cold temperatures in the waters off New England and were rescued from the beaches of Cape Cod over the past few weeks. The group arrived on Friday at Galveston Sea Turtle Facility operated by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. There the turtles will be slowly warmed to a safe temperature and treated for infections, frostbite, and other health problems. They're not in great shape. Cold, stunned turtles don't drown, but they do stop moving and eating oh yeah well any reptile that that requires higher temperatures will stop eating when it gets cold a lizard yeah eventually they are washed ashore where they often die the beaching is an annual event in, but more turtles have washed ashore this year than in previous years. Okay. Since <coughs> November the 3rd, more than 1,000 turtles have been beached in Massachusetts. More than half of them are still alive. That has overwhelmed the resources of the New England Aquarium in Boston. Which usually treats the beach turtles. Well, turtles, sea turtles will migrate. Like, like Not if any other. Huh? They ain't going anywhere if they're frozen. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're, they're like, they will follow, let's say, in the case of marine creatures from the tropics in this part of the world. They will generally stay within the Gulf Stream, and the Gulf Stream does not go to New England. Besides Galveston, the aquarium has sent turtles to more than a dozen other U.S. rehabilitation centers, including some in Pittsburgh, Washington, D.C., and Orlando, Florida. Florida. Orlando. Obviously, these are indoor. What is that again? Obviously, these are indoor facilities. Yeah, yeah with a 
salt water uh, pool or something. We're always here and available and always have space to deal with large sea turtle events. This is not the first time that Noah Sea Turtle Center in Galveston has rendered aid to hypothermic and turtles. It also has treated turtles brought in from Louisiana after the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Yeah, and there's still a ring around the tub at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Still oil and dead marine life. Once the turtles recover, be released offshore next spring. Efforts to protect the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle have boosted their population by 12% to 17% a year. But in 2010, the year of the spill disaster in the Gulf of Mexico, the turtles' numbers began to fall. I like, I think they're very cute, sea turtles. I like turtles. I think I would love to participate someday in the... You want to kiss a turtle? No, no. I want to... You know how the babies hatch and, and uh, in their travels to the ocean from their, from their nest? get intercepted by predators of different types. I mean... And out of a hundred and three survive. Yeah, in other words, gather them up and make sure a hundred percent of the babies make it into the water. You know, and, 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 and are placed into the, the water without, like, seabirds seeing them you know, or, 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 you know, maybe bringing them to the weed beds where they, they must hide out somewhere when they go to sea. They must, like, hang around weed beds, like, like baby fish do, which they call fry. You know, they spend their, their early life in the sanctity of the weed beds. Maybe sargassum weeds. Anyway, go ahead. Scientists at a recent symposium in Brownsville reported the number of nests made by the endangered sea turtle in Mexico has fallen by 40 to 50 percent, with a similar drop off in Texas. There is a photo. How? Oh. Of your... Well, I see ba I see babies... I see photos of baby sea turtles all the time. Well, you're seeing an oh, That's a big baby. It's a baby. Yes. Uh. But it's not a hatchling. You just hold it up. It's not a hatchling. Now, I trust... Too close. ...that you can see... A little down and a little closer. A little closer. That you can see. All right, down just a bit. Ah, uh, down just a bit. More. Okay, right about there. All right, as you can see, it's like a, I guess a teenage mutant ninja turtle. You know, it's uh, it's not a hatchling, but it's it's a baby. Nonetheless, but it's not a hatchling. I know there's um, uh, loggerheads and leather. There's the leatherbacks or logger. I think they're called loggerhead turtles, green sea turtles. But the documentaries I've seen, they found diseases, uh, bacterial infections. You know when we when we 
had the red tide, which was a, a bacterial bloom, so to speak, and you know the the, the, the turtles had sores on them. Um, it's all done by because human greed, corporate greed, any damage to the environment. marsupial. It's not a cat. And, uh, but they became extinct in the early uh, 20th century. But they still have in a, a, uh, a jar of alcohol a fetus from the Tasmanian tiger. And they were looking scientists were looking DNA to try to bring back the Tasmanian tiger, which could be done. Maybe they should give that fetus to Centaur. And they'll never re, uh, uh, bring back the Tasmanian tiger. If they gave it to Centaur. Yeah, well, he could take it home to his kids and show it to the kids. Screw him, yeah. Rick Santorum. But anyway, uh, um, yeah, if they, if they find good DNA, they could, could bring back the Tasmanian tiger, just, just like they, just like they already have, I believe. Uh, uh, they found baby woolly mammoths up in Siberia with blood and meat, everything intact. So they're they said they were going to put it in an uh, Indian elephant, female Indian elephant, to bring back the woolly mammoth, which can, can be done if you have good DNA. Same thing with, uh, they also found uh, good T-Rex <laughs> DNA in Montana, and they, they said the closest relative to a T-Rex is a chicken so they want they wanted to do that put it in uh, fertilized chicken eggs to bring back the t-rex but we haven't heard anything about this so the media the US media keeps a lot of things secret a lot of things it's 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 very They want Americans to really be in the dark about many things. The writer claims that his sons are big men and that neither has ever committed interactions and infractions of the law. This is the beginning of a new reading, right? New reading. Okay, it will be the last one, right? I commend his parent, yes. Okay. Is he really scared? It seems to be extreme overkill. Police are in contact with thousands of people every day in America, and they don't kill any. Police officers are trained to make split-second decisions. They go from saying goodbye to family, and in minutes, they can be thrust into a situation where 
Someone is trying to kill them. This was the situation in Ferguson, Missouri. We do a society a disservice when we idealize men who have contempt for law and fight the police. The video of Eric Garner's death is troubling. But those officers didn't set out to kill Garner. It is evident in the video that he resisted arrest. I didn't hear anybody on the video say, you are under arrest. I didn't hear, I can't breathe. That's what I heard. Yeah. The, the officers spoke to him for a lengthy time, trying to get him to submit to a lawful arrest. that all high school students should be taught the law concerning arrests and interaction with police. The law is clear in that citizens are required to submit to arrest even if they believe the arrest is unlawful. You know what that would have done to you <clears throat> back in the 60s? down the south if you were black submitting to an unlawful arrest come on man wake up and smell the coffee it's preposterous just like uh, the uh, ocular uh, the, the, the yeah. eye socket fracture of the uh, cop in the Ferguson. Lobe, uh, yeah. 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 The Bullshit. cop in Ferguson. They have pictures of him. He looked fine. Exactly. Police officers, <coughs> excuse me, are trained to take any resistance as a threat. Officers have been killed making routine arrests and every arrest even minor could cause the death of anyone involved. I would recommend that everyone follow police orders. Do all the complaining that you want later. What if you never see the light of day? Eh? What if you never get your habeas corpus out in the goddamn street and get into court and win your case. Well, get a lawyer. Eric Gardner d did not seem to have any options. You know? No. <clears throat> the <clears throat> recent deaths of Michael Brown and Eric Gardner were tragedies. While the two situations occurred under very different circumstances, they are similar in one respect. Both victims were resisting arrest before losing their lives. The lesson for all citizens is that if you are accosted by a police officer and he gives you an instruction, obey him. What if he's a Nazi? Should we then obey him also? Well, um, there has to be just cause to be stopped. Well, who's going to determine that? The policeman. Over. Well, like obviously, you, like with the gun. Like you told me, the man with the gun. Like you told me, uh -huh. you you say, uh, am I being detained or oh, well, am I free different. to go? But yeah, and, but that's... And, and if you're if you're if you're guilty of anything or suspicious of anything. The cop will say you're being detained. Yeah, that is true. 
But back in the 60s, if you were black, and you said, am I being detained or am I free to go? You might be clobbered over the head and beat the shit out of and maybe even lynched without being detained. It all depends. These are not absolutes here. And it also depends on the fact that you're dealing with an honest policeman. I mean, I mean, uh, um, uh, threats can be perceived differently by different people, uh, but there should be there should be a set of rules as far as when the safety of a police officer is. What about? But the policemen that danger. don't obey those rules and they beat the shit out of you or they, shoot you in the head or throw in a flash grenade well, and then, a yeah, then you have a what? problem if somebody got up on the wrong side of the bed and uh you know i've heard stories where like a teenage girl was pulled over and uh you know like a um, um, white girl too you know a, a, a cop passed her head up against, you know, against the cement, concrete, and chipped her tooth, or, you know, like, like, somebody's in a bad mood, and they just, they just decide to bodily harm someone. That's un why. Unjustifiably. That's why all of these things must be investigated, and the perpetrators must be punished. You can't have have Wall Street too big to fail. You can't have people above the law. That's correct. And that goes for corporations. You can't have people uh, legally better than you and being above the law because they're a corporate CEO or they're a police officer, or they're military personnel, yeah. or they're a congressman, or they're a senator, and you're not. That's correct. Because, That's correct. simply because they say so, or or the Supreme Court says so, or, you know, even they should not be above the law. Supreme Court justices. <laughs> oh, well, way back when, you know, Chief Justice Earl Warren said that, and it's in the new newsletter I quoted, judges should not be responsible for their mistakes. <laughs> uh, isn't that nice to get away with that? Remember uh, when uh, actress Reese Witherspoon's a boy, a drunken, disorderly boyfriend was being arrested and Reese Witherspoon kept on yelling at the police, do, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Well, that means that Reese Witherspoon, an actress, a celebrity, felt that the cop should just leave her boy boyfriend alone or husband or whatever the hell he was because she is a celebrity, and she's better than the average citizen. As Stalin said about the Pope, how many divisions does the Pope have? Huh? Divisions. Military! Oh. Stalin could beat the shit out of them! Because he had more divisions under his command. So Stalin was so how many divisions did Reese Witherspoon have against the man with the gun? No, well, that Reese, w Reese Witherspoon None. lost her argument. My point entirely. But she wanted special treatment. You know, Stalin's statement was like that of a bully. Well, he was a bully. That's the point. You know. That's the point, you know. Who the hell wants to listen to the Pope? He ain't got no divisions. People, uh, you know, 
people will get away with as much as they can. Yeah. They will do things. Especially when there's no regulation. If they can. Especially if there's no regulation. Yes. So a corporate CEO will get away with as much uh, uh, um, chicanery yeah. as he, he or she can if yes. they're allowed. Yes. And apparently, since uh, everything they have is bought and paid for, and, uh, you know, congressmen and senators accept the bribes. They get away with a lot of shit. They get away with a lot of stuff. Jesse Ventura said he refused to meet with any lobbyists when he was governor of Minnesota. A politician does not have to meet with lobbyists if they don't want to. But if, the, polit if the politician is getting something from through, through from meeting with the lobbyists and they know they're going to be getting something that's when they and, meet with them. they'll meet with the lobbyists of course but they are there to do the people's business they forget that don't they i think it's not a matter of forgetting it's a matter of where the power is their priority their priorities are, priorities are screwed. Yeah. yeah. Their priority is uh, the get way of life, like you said many times, me, 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 I, I, I. Mm -hmm. Not the give way of life, the no. get way of life. And uh, so anyway, are you almost finished with this? In any event, don't physically resist, even if you believe you are in the right. Brown and Garner had followed police instructions. Both young men would be alive today. Listen, Michael Brown was his name? Michael? Michael Brown. Michael Brown, even if he was belligerent and loud, boisterous, and uh, acting like a thug in the convenience store, okay, it doesn't give the right of the cop to blow an unarmed person away. Okay. And not 35 feet from him, but more like an 885 feet. You call for backup, you call for backup, you run after him, you get, you get your asses out of Dunkin' Donuts, you 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 run, you you tackle them, you you, you handcuff them, and, and you arrest them for whatever he did in the convenience store, plus resisting arrest. He knew nothing about the convenience store at the time the shooting went down. Well, what did he do in the convenience store? Who? They had him on camera, Michael Brown. The officer knew nothing about that. Okay, so... He stopped Brown while walking down the middle of the street. Because he was like... Or jaywalking. Jaywalking. And then yeah. Brown took off. Whatever right? happened. And then he decided to kill Brown, Michael Brown, just because Michael Brown was running from him. And, and, and he was too lazy to give chase. And he didn't want to chase him, and so he I guess him because he was black, I'm sure that was part of the reason. And so he, he shoots him 185 feet away. In the back? Uh, no, in the front. In, in the front. So he, he And then in the head as he was falling to the ground. Oh, so it was like execution style. An unarmed uh, young man. Uh, yeah, and, and, uh, uh, and you know some some um, some uh, Tea Party, I mean uh, Republican supporters, you know, I mean average idiots, average citizens, they actually believe the story of that police officer uh, uh, being uh, uh, about his safety being in danger. They actually believe that malarkey, that those lies. 
They, they well, tell me that. Well, you know, I mean, it's strange. Uh, we are so hypnotized or whatever to believe that someone with the gun can have his life in jeopardy. I, I think racism play, played a key role in, in the attitudes of these people. It's Missouri, my friend. Friend, of just, course it did. Just like the attitudes they have for poor President Obama, putting him Jeez. through the meat grinder, attacking him and blaming him for every damn thing. Uh, uh, I was going to mention something. Parents, educators, friends, and the police themselves should vigorously communicate this lesson to the general public, particularly young people when they are growing up. If a policeman gives you an instruction, do what he says. What if he points the gun? And a young, attractive woman who says, Suck my dick, bitch. That has happened. No kidding! In other words, abuse of power. Well, you certainly cannot be this absolute in dealing with these things, can you? Right. Well, uh, or a cop, a crooked cop, let's say, he busts uh, um, uh, some drug dealers and he takes the confiscated drugs and sells them on yeah. the side uh -huh. and parties with it himself. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, in other words, the rules are there for a reason. Laws are there for a reason. Just like Ten Commandments are in, uh, in the Old Testament for a reason. They're what? there for a reason. Regulation is as good as the regulator. If, you if don't, there are no regulators, if you don't enforce it, and enforcers, they're worthless. Right. Just as the indictments from the grand jury to cops. Yeah. They're worthless. They're nothing. They're not, not going to happen. Right. Well, let me know when you're done. Cause I to resist. Forcibly is courting injury or worse. Yeah, you're asking for, for, for so trouble. So this gentleman here is an excuse for the police. Like, 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 I'll give you another example. The Occupy Wall Street protesters at the uh, Zucchini Park. Or what, no, Zuccotti, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm Zucchini. just trying to be funny. Zuccotti Park. Hey, Stevie. The cat. Uh, if you're protesting at the Wall Street event and you're blocking traffic, you're blocking uh, a street or a sidewalk and pedestrians cannot get by, and the police ask you, please move off the sidewalk and allow the pedestrians to go by, please, you're blocking. You comply with it. You don't get arrogant and start mouthing off to the cops because you're a big, big shot because you're protesting. And, no. You're supposed to legally, peacefully protest. You're not supposed to harass anyone. You're not supposed to taunt and yell and throw things at anyone that ha happens to be working in a, you know, uh, in, in a building in Wall Street. You don't block traffic. You do it in a respectful, peaceful manner. You you comply with the law. You don't act like a like a like a dick. You know what I mean? What if the law is unlawful? Well then you got a problem. Alright. Big problems. All right. Now what I want to happen to say is oh naturally that's what happened. They made Goldman 
Saxon. Well, Mr. Clinton! Oh, okay. They made the illegal illegal! Oh, like the, uh, like the laws uh, in the Wild Wild West. There wasn't any law then. The kangaroo court. They had to get wired up in there to be the law. Now, uh, recently, uh, I watched a video of a recent interview of uh, former Mayor Rudy Giuliani, and, Rudy, and they were talking about, you know, Giuliani was sticking his two cents in, of course, he's not shy about doing that, about how he would handle the problems of today and everything you know, critiquing who he wanted to critique, and, and uh, they got to the point, they, they came, they started talking about race relations and, and the situation, hold on, situation with, uh, you know, Eric Gardner and the, and the protesting and, and Ferguson, Rudy Giuliani says, when I was mayor, I did not listen to people like Al Sharpton. I did not want to meet with Al Sharpton because he says people like Al Sharpton are not part of the solution. They have nothing to, if they have nothing constructive to and be a part of the solution, then I, I won't listen to them. I won't pay attention to them. Well, Al Sharpton His complaints and gripes are very justified. So what does he mean by Al Sharpton not being part of the solution? What is the solution? Whatever Giuliani wants. To Republican Giuliani. Whatever he wants. If, 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 if there's wrongdoing, like with Eric Gardner case. If there's wrongdoing, you know what you do? Al Sharpton will come out and he's justified. You make the wrongdoing into legal. That's what you do. You you do the right thing. That's not the right thing. Well, I mean, the right thing is is to uh, is to uh, you um, you have uh, lawsuits and uh, 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 investigations of everyone involved, and you and ju you allow justice to prevail. You do the right. But I was talking about the Republicans, like Giuliani. They, what they do is, they take a bad law and they make it legal. That's all they do. You know, things. because like, what Al Sharpton does is, in some ways, similar to what, let's say, uh, Ralph Nader did with, uh, with uh, consumer issues. If somebody's getting fucked. With the car company. Somebody's getting fucked General over. There's an injustice. There's an injustice. Whether it be a consumer product, whether it be somebody's civil rights, or whatever, they're very similar. They're both activists handling different parts of life, yeah. different uh, different uh, fields. They're both activists, but they both, the point is they're both activists to do the right thing. To, they are very constructive. So Republicans like to say, well, they're not part of the solution. Even Chris Christie has said it. You're not part of the solution. Their solution. But, but their, so what's their solution? Solution. Is their solution really a solution? No. But if they put it into law, then it's a solution. Oh, sorry folks. But anyway, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it, man. Um yeah, the cat wants to go out again. It's, it's getting dark. It's getting dark early because it's winter. Yep. So 
have a, a safe, enjoyable weekend. And uh, see you next time on Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. You probably hear more meows. Okay, say so long to these jabronis. You pencil neck geeks. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.